Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So it looks like Bitcoin is continuing to climb, guys. It looks like we have hit, uh, almost hit $39,000, or actually did hit that $39,000 mark uh, late last night around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're just kind of chilling out in this zone here. Well, Bitcoin has had quite a year. It is the beginning of December 2023. And uh, I mean, it's the highest point of the year. We did see a big 180 from 2022 when Bitcoin was down in and around 16,000 uh, at the same point last year. So uh, we have seen incredible gains for Bitcoin now. Uh, 2023 is just the beginning of this. And I do think the gains are just going to continue into 2024 and 25. Uh, we are going to see some retracements in the meantime. I mean, the rest of the crypto market is uh, yeah, doing OK. XRP right now trading a little bit above where it was trading yesterday. Uh, but Bitcoin is that big player. Bitcoin is really the one to be eyeing right now because it is the one in all bull cycles. It has not changed yet. That really does kind of uh, drive the market forward. And then altcoins like XRP tend to follow. So greed is up too. I mean, with a new Bitcoin high for 2023, we're seeing greed at 72, which is uh, pretty high still. I feel like, uh, you know, people are probably buying at the wrong time. Uh, you're going to have opportunities, guys. You're going to have opportunities. Bitcoin up 1.09%. We got Ethereum up 9 point, or sorry, 0.91. Uh, we got BNB coin down a little bit. XRP is up 0.74 and Solana up 2.39. Solana, one of those ones that uh, is in my legacy portfolio that I am going to be discussing with my patrons at patreon.com slash working money channel, but it has uh, done fairly well. As you guys can see here, uh, this was my cost average uh, $26.71. So, so far, uh, even though I did not buy in at the most opportune time, I mean, I got in and around here and then the black swan hit FTX collapsed, went bankrupt. Sam Bankman fried got arrested. And, uh, I mean, I should have down cost average, but at that time I was focusing on the, uh, on the $10,000 plus portfolio diversifying into some other coins at patreon.com slash working money channel. And uh, if you guys are interested in seeing what I am diversifying into, I know some of those coins are actually still under the cost average of where I bought them back last spring. So I do still think there is a lot of potential there. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Uh, but you know, there is still potential there. You can find out what I'm trading guys at patreon.com slash working money channel. And it is the beginning of the month. So it's a good time to join if you guys are interested. Uh, so crypto market, a eh, bit of a mixed bag right now. Uh, we got the market cap up to about $1.46 trillion. We got Bitcoin dominance still hanging on 51.9. And I don't think we're really going to see that uh, number move too much until later on in the cycle. And we thought crypto regulations were all going to be sorted by 2023, didn't we? Even Giancarlo, Christopher Giancarlo says uh, he believes there will be crypto regs in the United States by 2023. Well, tick tock, we've only got a month left. How long until there's a uh, institutional regulatory framework in the US for crypto trading? How many years? So it's, here we are, 2022. It's an election year in the US. And, and sometime after 4th of July, Independence Day in the United States, all legislative activity will come to a stop because every member of Congress is up for re-election and one third of the Senate is up for re-election in November. And they'll spend the summer and the fall campaigning. So I don't really have hope for crypto legislation this year, but I have high hope for crypto legislation in 2023. There are a lot of uh, congressmen and women and senators right now who are talking to crypto concerns, who are uh, 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 realizing that this, this is a, an innovation that's not going away. Uh, they're making promises to work on legislation. And I think you'll see those promises fulfilled after the election, probably this time next year, 2023. I think you'll see some legislation come through the House. It is time for Congress to step into this debate. It's, it's you know, the, when, when we've done this right, uh, such as exploring outer space or in the early days of the internet, exploring cyberspace, the United States has always had a, 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 a sort of a, a comprehensive effort involving the private sector, involving the public sector. And, and, and when it comes to the public sector, Congress, as well as the administration, you know, it was in the 1990s that the, the uh, that a Democratic White House under Bill Clinton and a Republican Congress under Newt Gingrich laid the foundation legislatively for what became U.S. dominance in the first wave of the Internet. And I think we need a similar effort right now between Congress, the White House, and of course, the private sector to bring this in. I'm quite confident we're going to see that into 2023. Into 2023, you say, well, 2023 has come and almost gone, and we still have not seen uh, a change. But guys, this is what, uh, well, this is what they're saying now, courtesy of the ISO GOAT here. Republican leadership squabbles delays over U.S. crypto bills until 2024. Well, 
it got delayed. So Republican Representative French Hill and uh, Democrat Representative Jim Himes sees potential future floor votes for crypto bills being key to convincing the Democrat-controlled Senate to play ball. Uh, so guys, here's what's happening now. This is the latest uh, with regards to uh, what they have planned for uh, crypto regulations in the U.S. Coming next year, after months of hoping U.S. crypto regs could win House of Representative approval this year, lawmakers doing much of the behind the scenes work are looking at 2024 as the time when digital asset bills may get passed by that Republican controlled chamber, though the efforts still face an uphill climb in the Senate where Democrats have the reins. Uh, we do know too, 2024 is going to be an election year. It's also going to be a bull run year. And I have a feeling, I mean, when they, when we got Chris Giancarlo saying, well, it's got to be regulated by 2023 that was their plan clearly and it didn't work out clearly they wanted to get the reins on this thing before the bulls started running so uh they're either gonna have to push it very very quickly or they're gonna miss another bull run and i mean hopefully fingers crossed you know in some ways fingers crossed it is a double-edged sword i do kind of hope we still have a cowboy crypto bull run and by that i mean you know like typical bull runs where we haven't uh seen that, uh, you know, typical institutional dominance yet because uh, it will still be a very predictable market. Again, guys, this is why I have my eyes set on diversifying into different types of cryptocurrencies this time around. I am going to be letting all my Patreon subscribers know about my entry points, exit points, and I want to make sure that you guys can follow me throughout until the top, until I cash out all my crypto right at the top. So I've kept it at $5 a month. I haven't created any special tiers. You're going to be getting all kinds of uh, little perks, like I'm going to be doing a live Q&A session. Uh, and so it is at patreon.com slash working money channel. I do think, you know, this is a very different time for crypto and we're, you know, we're changing, we're switching, we're coming into a new reality for cryptocurrencies, uh, and regulations are obviously going to play a big part in it, but now they're saying 2024. Uh, so anyway, wanted to thank the ISO goat and ISO 2022 just for pointing that out. Now, uh, the other thing is XRP adoption and XRP liquidity. Now, Yassim Oberic did uh, ask David Schwartz to shed light on why XRP, even though we did get a verdict back five months ago, why has XRP not been provided in Ripple's liquidity hub? And David Schwartz actually did answer here. Moberic asked Schwartz to shed light on why XRP is yet to be incorporated into Ripple's liquidity hub product, even after the landmark legal decision that is now five months old. Boy. I'm surprised that it's already been that long. Recall July 13th, U.S. Judge Annalisa Torres affirmed that XRP is not inherently a security. So guys, why hasn't Ripple uh, actually adopted XRP in their liquidity hub? Uh, well, David Schwartz did explain here. Uh, Yassim said, you know, uh, can you please explain, David Schwartz, why XRP has not been included? Uh, after, it's now been five months after the July 13th decision by Torres stating XRP is not inherently a security. And David Schwartz basically said, unfortunately, no. Look at what happened the last time I did exactly this around our ODL strategy. So he cannot uh, give an answer, I guess, maybe bound to legal reasons. Possibly the lawsuit has not fully been concluded. This is what somebody on uh, Twitter remarked here. And regulations still haven't been established in the U.S. as well as many other regions. So patience wins the race. And guys, uh, you know, I think that this is uh, pretty much the reason. Ripple wants to make sure that they're doing everything by the book. And they're not going to jump at adding XRP to anything quite yet. What they are doing, though, I mean, with the Uphold uh, partnership and with, uh, you know, all the other announcements that they're making in the U.S., I see them getting ready, getting poised and ready to pounce when the time is right. So Uphold, that partnership, that was a big one. Uh, they're going to be the liquidity provider in the U.S. And so, uh, you know, Ripple is forming these partnerships. They're even announcing these partnerships publicly uh, to let the public know that when, it's not a matter of if, but when XRP and Ripple are finally free and clear 100% from the SEC lawsuit at that point in time and only at that point in time will the strategy be rolled out. So uh, positive news in that, uh, you know, we, we don't want these guys to jump the gun because again, a misstep could be very costly. So uh, I could see why XRP is not uh, included in the liquidity hub yet. Patience, as, uh, as that user was saying, patience is a virtue. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. So what else is happening? Well, the SEC is having a tough time. A federal judge has actually threatened to sanction the SEC's lawyers after their false arguments prompted a court to impose a temporary restraining order 
on crypto firm Debtbox. So guys, this is the latest now, and this is not a good look. According to an order issued by the U.S. District Judge Robert Shelby of the U.S. District Court in Utah, the SEC's attorneys could be sanctioned for making misleading arguments about crypto project debt boxes, alleged uh, efforts to transfer its assets to investor funds overseas, leading a court to freeze the project's bank accounts. The SEC's misrepresentations undermined the integrity of the case's proceedings, in addition to causing debt box irreparable harm, Judge Shelby said in the order. So now it's another judge here saying the SEC, super shady, misrepresenting now uh, statements to the point where it could affect uh, the the defendants. So again, not a good look. And uh, I mean, even Stuart Alvarado came out and uh, t commented on this. Cowboy Crypto here po uh, posted the Stuart Alvarado tweet. A troubling pattern emerges. Court finds the SEC has demonstrated hypocrisy by making inconsistent arguments to the court and not acting out of faithful allegiance to the law. That was uh, with regards to the Ripple case back in 2022. And then in 2023, court agrees that the SEC defaulted on its duty to respond in good faith to Coinbase's petition for crypto rulemaking. Again, that was with regards to Coinbase. And now, guys, this is what we have now. Court finds that the SEC's inconsistent treatment of similar products is arbitrary and capricious. Or sorry, no, that was the grayscale thing. Sorry, that was in August. And now in November, court orders the SEC to show cause why it should not be sanctioned for making false and misleading representations to the court. Uh, then that was the SEC versus debt box case from just a couple of days ago. So uh, Stuart Alvarado pointing out all the missteps of the SEC. And uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's already kind of been determined that I don't think the SEC is really going to have uh, that same kind of uh, jurisdiction over crypto assets uh, in the future. I think when Congress has, uh, you know, finally hammered out these regs, we're going to see a very different landscape, even when it comes to regulation. So not even just the cryptocurrency landscape, which is the thing that we were originally focused on, but the regulatory landscape, I think, is going to be uh, divided up. They couldn't get it right. They're obviously not approaching it in a proper way. So, you know, this is going to be, and this is probably also why we're seeing, you know, Giancarlo being optimistic about 2023. And now it's uh, everything's being pushed to 2024 because nobody can get their gosh darn ducks in a row. Anyway, Cowboy Crypto wanted to thank him, Stuart Alderati, for posting that. We've also got this news, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman. Is this a new Ripple partner? So Ripple might actually be working with the island of Niu. Is it Niu or Niu? Island of Niu in Oceania. Ah, uh, there we are. Island of Niu. Wow, a very small island. Uh, I believe it is even smaller than Palau. And it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, there's Samoa, the Cook Islands. Wow. Okay, so possibly another partnership uh, with the island nation of Niu right off uh, the coast. They're kind of close to, not even that close, but kind of close to Australia. But here's what they're doing. They might be working with uh, Niu tokenizing sustainability credits. A recent local interview of Chris Larson discussed carbon credits as financial inclusion. And he mentioned Niu, Ripple, Centigrade, Launch, and Palau. Uh, so Wrath of Kahneman uh, bringing this up. It's not entirely clear what Niu is pursuing, if blockchain is involved, etc., but uh, it looks as though they are uh, tokenizing carbon credits. And I mean, if it is uh, the tokenization of carbon credits and uh, Chris Larson is the one being uh, being interviewed here, chances are they are leveraging RippleNet for that. Uh, so guys, here's another reference if you're interested. Uh, and I will link this in the description at this point. It's still uh, just speculation. There is no confirmation that uh, Ripple is tokenizing carbon credits for yet another island nation. Uh, nevertheless, wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. Michael Branch also bringing us this. I have not talked about Algorand in a while, but it is still one of my uh, legacy portfolio positions that uh, I'm going to be talking about with my Patreon subscribers. And uh, I know some in the XRP community, uh, like me, had invested in Algorand and it really got hit pretty hard right now trading at 14.3. So, I mean, is there a future for this token in terms of, uh, you know, getting out and still making profit? Uh, considering, you know, we've only seen it up uh, just a smidge uh, since the beginning of the year, only 64% compared to some other cryptocurrencies. Uh, again, I'm going to be talking about my strategy for Algorand because this was one of the ones that I kind of didn't even want to face. Uh, but I am going to be posting my strategy for that as well at patreon.com slash working money channel. Regardless though, guys, these are projects that do have real world value. So, you know, at the worst case scenario, hold it for the long term. Uh, the Algorand Blockchain Academy will be made available to 22,000 UN staff members worldwide. So the United Nation has now tapped Algorand to develop Web3 education for UN staff. This is a big partnership, guys, involving the United Nations. Uh, this was announced November 30th. The UNDP will make the Algorand Blockchain 
Blockchain Academy available to more than 22,000 employees and staff from other United Nations agencies. The curriculum will focus on practical applications for blockchain technology in the context of sustainable development. Uh, a beta version, of course, will commence during quarter one of 2024. So uh, interesting to note that the rollout across UNDB's grab staff throughout the year. Uh, the initiative was announced by Robert Pasico, uh, a UNDP research and data analyst focused on alternative finance and low carbon development at the Algorand Impact Summit in New Delhi. And guys, here's a quote. The Algorand Blockchain Academy will be instrumental in equipping our team with the tools needed to address complex global challenges using blockchain technology. So uh, the project is certainly not dead in the water. The coin price, however, uh, is not reflecting that. And, you know, this could mean some good opportunity, guys, for this particular cryptocurrency. Again, I would wait to see a dip in the market before I make any decisions. Nevertheless, uh, some interesting news there for the Algorand holders. Those people still toughing it out, holding Algorand like myself. Anyway, wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Uh, also happened to see this, guys, with regards to Ripple Partner TerraPay. Uh, they have just uh, forged a new partnership with Small World Money Transfer. And Small World Money Transfer is a leading provider of cross-border money transfer services, uh, along with TerraPay as well. So for customers and businesses specifically, uh, and it is an ever-evolving cross-border payments landscape. This collaboration is poised to redefine mobile wallet services across the country of Senegal, uh, ensuring the Wave Wallet account holders can directly receive remittances into their wallets uh, via instant bank transfers from the EU and UK using small world money transfer. At the heart of this partnership is the recognition of the hurdles uh, the Senegalese uh, expatriates encounter when attempting to send money back home, leaving customers yearning for a more convenient and secure alternative. It feels like, you know, a lot of these uh, Ripple related partnerships with these smaller uh, Ripple related partners do all have some kind of, you know, some similar connection here with regards to the expatriates, people uh, living abroad, needing to send money back home in a very affordable way. And so, uh, you know, this one is focusing on the Senegalese people. Here's a quote at the heart of our mission is the drive to provide customers with the means to send money to friends, family, and loved ones in a most cost effective way. And we have been working tirelessly to offer our clients the best possible service in an easy, fast, and secure manner. This partnership will provide more convenience and options for our customers sending money to Senegal. So uh, another Ripple partnership, guys, this time with TerraPay and Small World Money Transfer. So that's uh, some more great news there with regards to another Ripple partner. I uh, also happen to see this, guys. Ripple partner PaySend has raised $65 million in their latest funding round. So just real quickly here, uh, another Ripple partnership. They will enhance cross-border payments for SMEs. We've heard a little bit about PaySen in the past. Uh, and so they have secured a strategic partnership with Television or Televisa, Televisa Univision, the world's largest Spanish language media company. This innovative partnership is designed to target the lucrative USA Latin American money transfer corridors and we'll see PaySen's advertising featured on the network. And guys, guess who they're partnered with? None other than MasterCard. So this is a MasterCard partnership. We know about the ties with MasterCard already with Ripple along with PaySend. So uh, another interesting uh, collaboration here, MasterCard, PaySend, raising another $65 million in this particular funding round. So guys, we're seeing it continue to develop. I thought, uh, you know, it would taper off after a while, but the developments are just continuing and the RippleNet web just keeps getting larger and larger. And so, you know, I think uh, everybody in the crypto world is waiting for that big blast off. And, uh, you know, 2024 is going to be the beginning of it, but we're going to start to see more ads like this. And guys, I concur. I saw this ad on coin. I saw a few people posting it and, you know, it really does hit home. We can change the world with cryptocurrency. We can build our way out of the system that has kept us in a little square box for way too long. There's a system, Emma. We're born into it. A system with numbers and papers. And lines. And waiting. You work hard, get good grades, go to college. I want to go to college. I got good grades. I overachieved. That's right, she did. Debt is good? Debt is so good. So much debt. I can totally save up and buy a house and start a family. I want a family. Oh. Starting a family means you need two or three jobs. You can't afford to buy. Oh. You can't afford to rent. Used cars cost as much as the new ones. Oh. It's weird. Good debt is good. Who's head of my class? Houses are too expensive. You work hard, get good. The system, the number. Rent is freaking insane. Breaking news. Everything is terrible. Does it have to be this way? What if it was different? It's always been that way. We've got to build our way out of it. Yeah. Put control back to the hands of the people. Not the bureaucracy. A system with less paperwork. No waiting. No lines. Permissionless. Just because you're born into a system doesn't mean you have to live with it. 
And I gotta say, I'm not even a huge fan of Coinbase, but I love this ad. Born into a system, we gotta build our way out of it. That is what it's all about. So I wanted to thank Naomi Brockwell for uh, originally posting this new Coinbase ad. I think you guys probably feel the same way. Luckily for us, we are seeing more institutional adoption. This is another one uh, from a panel here, an online uh, discussion with a representative from Coinbase, courtesy of ISO 20022, major confirmation from Coinbase that institutional money has now arrived to the crypto market. Guys, listen to this. Be begin with the demand. Um in terms of the crypto uh, trading and, and associated services, where have you seen the most demand from your client base? Uh, hi, Will. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, just before I answer this question, it's worth giving a bit of context about the formation of crypto as an asset class. So over the last 20 years, new markets have been created and adopted by institutions. Uh, we're talking about FX, treasuries, credit, EM, commodities, derivatives, structured products, and so on. Uh, typically, it takes around three to five years before clients and their banking and trading partners all adopt a new vertical. But in 2021, crypto markets compacted a five year into a one year cycle. Um, the end of 2020 kicked off an institutional onboarding year in 2021, as traditional finance participants started to engage in crypto ecosystem in earnest. Institutional clients volumes basically 10x as they traded $1.1 trillion in volume in cryptocurrency on Coinbase, up from 120 billion the year before. So now to answer your question, I would say every type of institutional investors uh, have been uh, very much involved in 2021 and each for their own reasons. So let's start with hedge funds, which are the primary users and who are using our flagship prime brokerage services to create, maintain uh, and refine their edge in generating alpha. Uh, the second bucket is VCs and they continue to deploy capital in the crypto economy as digital assets and blockchain technology are increasingly viewed as providing uncorrelated returns. Uh, the flows are driven mostly by LPs and asset owners who are looking to allocate to gross investments in a low yield environment. The next bucket, family offices, uh, they enjoy lower regulatory and shareholder obligations compared to institutions. And that enables them to be more future forward and seek higher growth strategies. I would say that they were the earliest entrance to crypto as long-term investors. And this was also driven by the next generations that are more open to crypto and digital assets than their parents. Now to a lesser degree, I would say asset managers who are the gatekeepers of roughly 200 trillions of capital. Their investment mandates and fiduciary duties are unfortunately requiring much longer due diligence. So adoption is taking time with this group. And it's however a question of when, not if. And at Coinbase, uh, being a publicly listed company, we're playing a huge role thanks to a very robust suite of products and services for this micro segment. Finally, the last segment uh, is about corporates. Uh, very different is not necessarily about investments, but the utility function of digital assets beyond the investment aspect of tokens resonates very strongly with them. Uh, use cases such as merchant payments, treasury management, and NFTs to better engage with their clients and fans uh, are a proof that uh, this segment is re-entering uh, uh, as an early uh, adoption phase. So I got to say, that was probably one of the most informative uh, video clips from somebody discussing institutional adoption. And uh, as this guy was saying, OK, so this is a Coinbase presentation, as you guys can see uh, down here. I don't know if you guys can catch that. It does say Coinbase. Uh, they were focusing on institutional onboarding. And he was saying one point one trillion dollars in 2020 and 2021. Now, that was the last bull run. And we got up as high as we did. Fast forward to 2023, coming into 2024, guys. And I have a feeling we are going to see even more institutional adoption. So we uh, focused on hedge funds uh, specifically. Uh, and, and these are big players, okay? VCs, they're probably not investing as much money as they uh, as they would otherwise. But guys, they still are investing. And I think, uh, you know, now knowing what we know and the fact that uh, well, if we do have crypto regs by 2024, we are probably going to see this institutional adoption grow by, I don't know what X factor, but probably will grow if we do see that uh, those meaningful regulations in 24. Uh, he also mentioned family offices and they're in it for the long term. So uh, pension funds, stuff like that. Asset managers. So then the last two he said aren't uh, involved in crypto as much, but asset managers, they're still taking their time because they have to do their due diligence and corporations and guys, corporations want real world utility for crypto assets. So you can see they are not even in it as much as, uh, you know, the speculation at this point because the utility still isn't there. Not yet. 
but that could change at the drop of a hat. Finally, I wanted to bring you guys this from Anders here, bullish, liquidity begets liquidity. Now, Ripple just dropped this latest video, Crypto in One Minute, discussing exactly that, the fact that you need liquidity in order to make all these real world applications a reality. And coming from Ripple directly, guys, listen to this. I am not known for being brief, but it is a good challenge uh, I'm up for. Hi, my name is Brad Chase, and this is Crypto in a Minute. Liquidity absolutely impacts institutional adoption. So institutions, larger financial service businesses, banks, corporates, whatnot, uh, they're gonna need to be transacting and moving value in large sizes, more frequently, and importantly, uh, running a business, they have uh, high demands for uh, uptime and availability. So they need to be able to meet the needs of their customers. That means they need consistent supply of crypto, crypto liquidity, to facilitate that value movement. Uh, so if you're building a business in your institution that wants to adopt crypto, enough liquidity is crucial for you to be able to enter the space. Of course, the flip side of that is as institutions enter the space, that's going to draw more liquidity into the space. Though that's because that large demand need can be met with uh, supply. Uh, and so as you have more and more of that supply, you get a nice flywheel effect where more and more institutions adopt, they provide some liquidity, others come in to meet that liquidity need, and it grows and grows and grows. So crypto liquidity, absolutely essential for the adoption of crypto by institutions. So yes, to answer his question, liquidity does in fact impact institutional adoption. And so, you know, just going back to this video clip here, the fact that we are seeing those segments of institutional money flow in, I have a feeling we are going to see more real world development, especially if 2024 is now going to be the year of regulations. But that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. And if you wanna see where I'm gonna be selling my $10,000 plus portfolio, plus my legacy coins, including Bitcoin, XRP, and others, Follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. Again, that's just my opinion. Now, I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.